product of the lower ninth ward. Just wanted to give you that as a little bit of a background and some other things. I did grow up in the 1950s and Jim Crow laws. I do know what it's like to make a decision when you come up to colored and white water fountains. I didn't just read about it. I made decisions on that. I do know what it's like to go to a theater and uh, have to sit in the balcony because you can't sit in the bottom floor. But I just want you to know, just like with the four in Woolworths, in Greensboro, there are others that have paved the way. And we need to remember all of the perspectives if we want to motivate people for the future. I want to talk about uh, a little bit more in the background. Uh, in the military, I did have uh, the first uh, opportunity to be the first Minority Affairs Petty Officer in Patrol Squad in 23. I'm telling you all of this for a reason. For Command of the U.S. Sixth Fleet in the Navy, I was the first black staff meteorologist. I was the first black candidate for County Board Supervisor in Kenosha County uh, in 2004, in District 17. When I was on command of U.S. Sixth Fleet, I had the honor of being nominated to represent command of U.S. Sixth Fleet for the Roy Wilkins NAACP Equal Opportunity Award to represent uh, out of a potential 10,000 uh, candidates, I was nominated. Now, I'm telling you all of this for a reason. We have a lot of individuals who have a lot of backgrounds. We have Dr. Ada Fisher, who is right there, National Committee woman for the Republican Party, first black woman to that position. We have the Honorable Congressman Mel Watt, who is here, who has paved many ways, uh, has paved the way for many individuals and has served with distinction since he's been in office. We have individuals across many political spectrums that have done a lot of things. And I think if we want to motivate people and bridge that gap, I think we need to work in both directions in laying out that there are those that have gone before us. Not that we necessarily owe them a debt, but have a realization that those that have gone before us have made things better for us today. So let's build on success. You talk about the historic presidential election in 2008. Does anyone know what the, what the uh, margin was between John McCain and Barack Obama in the state of North Carolina? 15,000 votes in a state with over 6 million people. 15,000 votes. You had how many people? vote from this university alone. Uh, I think that's one third. I think things like that, not necessarily saying that 100% of the people that came from this university voted for Barack Obama, but to say uh, the margin was 15,000 votes in the presidential election. And over 5,500 students from this university participated in that constitutional process. That's something of pride and distinction. That is something I think you all would do well to highlight. I, I, I think that's absolutely marvelous. So some other ideas, I think that we could get into the media avenues. Maybe you could have some podcasts of recording some of the sessions, uh, getting a directory of the local officials, of the federal officials, and uh, communicating with them, encouraging them to have the two-way communication getting minutes of your, uh, your meetings, put out newsletters and the like, there are things I agree with you that uh, the people in political office need to do to be proactive, but it works all around. So I think that if we work together and have somewhat of a synergy to where we are communicating in, in two directions, I think we can build on successes, broaden individuals' understanding, and motivate them for future participation. Thank you. Thank you.